Hello everyone, welcome to this master class. A very good evening to each and every one of you. I guess all of you are excited about this 15 day sprint to JE main, the ultimate countdown. So guys, without wasting much time, let us get started with our session for today, which is on set relation, mathematical reasoning and statistics. Okay, so that will be our topic of discussion today. And my name is Shimon Joseph. I am a math master teacher at Vedantu. So I've been teaching for almost six years now. And when I was like you guys, a few years back, I too took the JE mains and I was one of the state toppers. I'm also a KVPY scholar. So that is a quick introduction about myself. So our topic for discussion is going to be set relation, mathematical reasoning and statistics. I know you guys might be thinking, sir, it's a very boring subject. It's very dry and all that. But guys, it has a good weightage and if you are looking for a top score, you need to spend some time mastering these particular chapters. Is that okay guys? So with that, let us get started. And before we dwell into the, you know, before we dive into this topic, I would like to ponder, I, I would like to think a bit more about this weightage. Okay, so that you guys get a clear picture of what we are looking at and what to expect in the exam. Okay. So let us have a look. So as you can see here, this is the weightage of mathematics in the recent years. Over the last five to six years, we have seen a trend in the questions. So the highest weightage is usually given to algebra because it contains a lot of chapters as simple as that. So algebra is going to be 30%, but we are not going to look at algebra today. So let us see what we are going to look at. So the topics that we are going to look at today constitute a minority constitute a minority. So it is going to come in others. So in others, you see there's five questions, right? There are five questions in others, which is a solid 16%, a solid 16%. So you have one question from set, one from relation, one from mathematical reasoning, and then one from statistics and so on. Okay. So these chapters, usually people tend to overlook because they are quite easy is one, one such notion. And the other notion is, should I even study that? It is too dry and boring and it is not required for JE advance. So that is a usual trend. But guys, if you are looking for a top score, this is quite important and you should really master this. Okay. So let us see what are some probable questions that might come up in the exam when you take it up this January. Okay. Perfect. So now, let us have a look at this question over here. So this question they're saying if A, B and C are three set and S is the universal set such that N of S is equal to 900, N of A is equal to 400, N of B is 250 and N of A intersection B is also given to you. Okay, now what are they asking? They are asking N of A dash intersection B dash. But sir, why did they give C in the question? Is that to confuse me or what? So, yes, I would say that probably this C was given to confuse a few of you. Okay, so let us see how to answer this question. And guys, what do you think will be the approach? What do you think will be the approach? Any idea? It's a very easy question, right? I'm sure all of you are thinking, why is this question being shown here? But I would like to throw some light on the method of solving sets question using Venn diagram. Okay, so Venn diagram is a very powerful tool when you try to solve set related question. So guys, what are they asking? They are asking, they are asking N of A dash intersection B dash. But from our knowledge of sets, from our knowledge of sets, you must be able to predict what is this? What is A dash intersection B dash? What region does it represent? That is very crucial to answer this question. So let us look at what this region is going to be. Okay. So let me draw a Venn diagram for you. So let's say this is my universal set. So let's say there are two sets A and B. This is my A and this is my B. And guys, what do you think is A dash intersection B dash? What is A dash? A dash is A complement. A complement is going to be everything outside of A. And what is B complement? B complement is everything outside of B. So now I'm looking at intersection of everything outside A and everything outside B. So what is the common region? 
the common region will be everything outside A and B. Will be everything outside A and B. Okay. Is that okay guys? So, what is this equivalent to? Can I say it is N of A union B, the whole complement? Is that correct? Can I say it is going to be N of A union B, the whole complement? Because this region is A union B. This region is A union B and we have everything outside of A union B. So, if you have everything outside of A union B, then the number of elements is going to be of that particular region. That's it. So, how do I calculate N of A union B the whole dash? So, can I say that is equal to N of S minus N of A intersection B? I'm sorry, A union B. N of S minus N of A union B. Can I say that? Does that make sense, everyone? So, that's it, guys. It's done because n of s is already given to me n of a is given n of b is given and n of a intersection b is given so using all these informations i can get my value of n of a dash intersection b dash so what is that going to be that is going to be 900 minus n of a union b what is n of a union b n of a plus n of b minus n of a intersection b is that okay so it is going to be 400 plus 250 minus what is A intersection B? It is 150. So my answer is going to be 900 minus 400 plus 250 minus 150 is going to be 500. Okay, so what is the answer? 900 minus 500 leaves me with 400 and that is the answer for this question. And guys, this is just a warm-up question. We will go to a slightly difficult level. Do not worry about it. Okay, so I'm sure all of you have got this concept and are okay with Venn diagram. Okay, that is my ultimate aim. So I want you guys to practice using Venn diagrams in your question. That's a very healthy way of solving questions, especially related to sets. Especially related to set. Okay, so now we will go to a slightly different question and see some other approaches that can be used. Okay, so this is the next question. I'm sorry. This is the next question that I have for you. So please check it out. So the question says that from 50 students taking examinations in mathematics, physics and chemistry, which you are all familiar with. So 37 passed mathematics, 24 passed physics and 43 passed chemistry. That is individual. Okay, now at most 19 passed. Mathematics and Physics, at most 29 passed Maths and Chemistry and at most 20 passed Physics and Chemistry. So when you go like at most, what do you mean by that? See, these words are very, very crucial. At most, at least and so on. So what do you mean by at most, sir? At most means at the maximum. At the maximum is known as at most. As simple as that. Okay, so now what can I say? The maximum number of people who passed both maths and physics, both maths and physics is going to be 19. So the maximum number of people who passed both maths and chemistry is going to be 29. And the number of people, the maximum number of people who passed both physics and chemistry is going to be 20. Is that clear guys? Comfortable? So now we will try to solve this question. Again, it comes from Venn diagram but for this I'm sure most of you might be knowing the formula already I'm sure most of you might be knowing the formula already so we will directly write it down we will directly write it down what is that n of a union b union c that is going to be equal to n of a plus n of b plus n of c and you have minus n of a intersection b minus n of b intersection c minus n of c intersection a plus n of a intersection b intersection c so that is my formula which most of you might be knowing it already okay this you have been doing right from 10 standard guys okay so now let us try to substitute the values into it 
Okay, let us try to substitute the values into it. How many people are there totally? Totally, there are 50 students only in the class. Okay, totally there are 50 students. So, this is going to be 50. So, 50 is equal to N of A plus N of B plus N of C. That means individual. Individual how many? Maths, you have 37. 24 physics and 43 in chemistry. So, I can say 37 plus 24 plus 43. Okay. Now, now, can I bring everything to the left hand side? I will keep these terms as it is. I will keep these terms as it is. What is the ultimate aim? Our ultimate, our ultimate aim is to find the largest possible number that could have passed all three exams. That means I am interested in N of A intersection B intersection C. That is what I want to find. So now to do that, I will bring everything to the left hand side. Apart from that, everything is removed. So let me write such an expression. Okay. Okay. So let me do that. So what will I get? I will bring everything to the left hand side. So I will have 50 minus 37 minus 24 minus 43 and then plus N of A intersection B plus N of B intersection C plus N of C intersection A is equal to what I am interested in. What I am interested in. Okay. So I will erase everything else. I hope it is clear now. I will erase this step. I hope you guys are following continuously. Okay. So let me do that. Okay. I think now it's clear. Okay. So guys, now, now please listen carefully. What is this? This is what I'm interested in. So I want that to be maximum. I want this to be maximum. If I want that to be maximum, shouldn't these three be maximum? Isn't that right? Because this is something subtracted. What is the result? I think it's going to be 50, uh, 61 and 104. So it is going to be 54. So it is going to be minus 54. So yeah, minus 54 plus something. And I want this to be maximum guys. I want my sum of these on the LHS to be maximum. Why sir? Because they are asking largest possible. Largest possible number that could have passed all the three exams which is N of A intersection B intersection C and they are asking you to maximize that. So these three should be highest. And what is the highest value of all these three? It is nothing but 29, 20 and 19. Because I said at most, right? At most means the highest value that is possible. So that is the value which I will take. Isn't that okay guys? Exactly, perfect. So let me substitute this as 19. This as 29. And this as... 20. So what is my final answer going to be? 49, 59, 68 minus 54. It is 68 minus 54. So my final answer is going to be 14. My final answer is going to be 14. Is that okay guys? Good sum, right? Quite easy. Again, quite easy because this relation is already known. But the funda behind it is very, very important. The funda behind it is very, very important. I hope all of you got it because the use of word utmost is sometimes tricky you know sometimes they can play with it so be careful while handling such questions guys okay i hope all of you have understood it we will move on quickly we will move on quickly so what will be the answer for this the answer for this question will be option d okay it will be option d i hope people have understood it so we will move to the next question now again a super duper easy question I get to focus on the concept of mean. So mean is something which we study in statistics. So a simple example, I think we will not waste time on this. We will quickly do it. It is not very difficult as you will see right now. So let me take black color now. Okay. So now the mean of 10 observations is 16.3. But what did they do? While they took this 10 observation, they wrote one of the observation wrong. They wrote one of the observation wrong. So the mean I got is not correct. Obviously the mean I got is not correct. And what did I do? Instead of writing it as 23, instead of 23, I put something more than 23. 
something more than 23 so the mean that i have the mean that i have is actually higher is actually higher and that you can see from the options as well the correct mean is lower the correct mean is lower and guys they have given options pretty close so you have to work it out and then get it correctly you cannot guess here so let us try to work it out now so the mean of 10 observation is 33 that means what x1 plus x2 plus x3 and so on till x10 is going to be 163 okay that is my mean that is given to me how sir 163 because i divide by 10 right i divide by 10 that turn that 10 goes to the right side it becomes 163 that's it now now comes the interesting part here one of the observation i wrote it wrong i wrote it wrong and that is why i got a high value that is why i got a high value and how much i wrote it wrong it is supposed to be 23 but i wrote as 32 so this should be this should be how much is the difference 32 minus 23 is 9 32 minus 23 is 9 so this sum is 9 more than my actual sum okay so this sum is going to be 9 more than my actual sum so what will i do any idea guys that's it over i'm sure all of you have got it so the actual sum is going to be 163 minus 9 which is 154 so 154 is going to be my actual sum and how many numbers are there how many observations are there you have 10 observations so what is my mean going to be my mean correct my mean correct is going to be 154 divided by 10 and that will be my option b that will be my option b is that okay everyone so that is how you solve questions related to mean and the concepts that are tested in JE mains are usually simple guys. You cannot go deep or you cannot go to a higher level in JE mains. When we go to advanced, we will come up with very good questions. Do not worry about it. But for mains, I need you guys to be very strong in concepts. So concepts is what makes a difference in mains. Okay. So let us go to the next one. Now, this is a good question. Okay, you guys can pause and try it out if you want to. If you want to, you can pause and try it out. This is a pretty good question. Because again, we see the concept of standard deviation, variance, everything coming into play. And for mains, yes, standard deviation and variance are very important. And last year, I don't know whether you guys checked it. They asked a direct question from variance, which was quite simple again. So you have to remember what is variance, what is standard deviation and more than remembering the formula, it is better you guys understand what it means. It is better you guys understand what it means. So let us see what they have asked here. Now they gave sum of uh, a sum of xi minus 8 and then they gave sum of xi minus 8 whole square is equal to 45. Now, now what do I have to find? They are asking standard deviation of x1 x2 x3 x4 till x18 they didn't ask standard deviation of this xi minus 8 they asked standard deviation of xi alone they asked standard deviation of xi alone okay so how do we do that how do we do that okay let us try to have a look let us try to have a look now i will give you a small example to visualize guys so I have 1, 2 and 3. Okay. I have 1, 2 and 3. Now I want to see what will happen if I add 8 to everything. What will happen if I add 8 to everything? Will it be this? Now what do you mean by standard deviation? Please let me know. What do you mean by standard deviation? Guys, the exact meaning of standard deviation is how spread out your data is. How spread out your data is. Now, can I say the spread of these two are the same? Can I say the spread of these two are the same? So, about my mean, how spread out my data is, that is called as standard deviation. That is exactly what you have to understand by the term standard deviation. So, how much is the spread from my mean? So, from my mean, both these are equally spread both these are equally spread because the difference here also is two here, here also is one here also is one here also difference is one here also difference is one and this is my mean two is my mean here and 10 is my mean here that's it 
So about my mean, they are equally spread. Therefore, it is going to be the same. So I can say both these have the same standard deviation. Both these have the same standard deviation. Sir, why are you explaining all this? Come to this question. So let us see how this concept which I explained here is used in this question. Okay, this is a pretty good concept. So let us try to solve it. Now, coming to this question, what is standard deviation? Standard deviation is nothing but square root of variance. Okay, so standard deviation is nothing but square root of variance. Okay, so I will usually standard deviation is represented as it's usually represented as sigma. So I can write sigma of xi. Now, let me take this as let me take xi minus 8 as ti. Let me take it as t. Okay, or ti. So, sigma of x should be equal to sigma of t. Why, sir? Because x1, x2, x3, x18 their standard deviation is going to be the same as the standard deviation for t also. Why? Because I'm just subtracting a constant. So subtracting a constant from all the terms is not going to disturb my spread. Is not going to disturb my spread. So the spread will remain the same. If the spread remains the same, then my standard deviation will also remain the same. Is that correct? So that is exactly what I wrote here. So now, what is variance? Variance is equal to square of standard deviation okay it is going to be square of standard deviation and can i write variance as e of x square minus e of x the whole square okay do you guys know this e of x the whole square minus e of x the whole square so that is what i am going to use that is expectation of x square minus expectation of x the whole square so let us try to do it and since I am writing t here, I will also write t over here. It is not going to be x, rather it is going to be t. Okay. So it is going to be e of t square minus expectation of t the whole square. That is the formula. Now what is e of t square? e of t square is nothing but the mean of squares. So the mean of squares is going to be how much? 45 by 18. Isn't that correct? Isn't that correct? Because 45 is the sum of the squares and divided by 18 is going to be the mean of the squares. Is that okay? So that is what I mean by E of T square. E means mean guys. E is nothing but expectation. Expectation is nothing but calculating the mean. Something like that. You can think of it that way. So now minus E of T square. E of t, the whole square. Okay, what is E of t? This is t. So sum of all t's is 9. Sum of all t's is 9. And what is the total number of elements? Total number of elements is 18. So 9 by 18 is my mean. 9 by 18 is my mean of t. Now what do I have to do? I have to square it. I have to square it. So what is my final answer? Can anyone tell me? So sigma t whole square is going to be, I can cancel by 9 tables. 9 fives are, 9 twos are. So it's going to be 5 by 2 minus 1 by 4. So my final answer will be 9 by 4. So 9 by 4 is standard deviation square. So what is standard deviation? Standard deviation is going to be 3 by 2. Is that okay? Good question, right? Guys, I might have gone a bit fast, but we have a lot to cover. That is the reason. So please try to go through this again. I am sure you will find something interesting here to learn. Okay. So please do that. So the standard deviation for this question is going to be 3 by 2. That is the final answer. I hope all of you got it. I take square root in the end. I take square root in the end. So square root of 9 by 4 is nothing but 3 by 2. Okay. Perfect. So we will move on guys. Good. Okay. Now we have come to the next interesting part. Okay, I think. Yep. So the next interesting part which I have for you is going to be relation. Okay. Relation, they are quite frequently asking questions based on equivalence relation. So they'll ask you how many terms are required. They'll ask you how many 
symmetric relations are possible, how many transitive relations are possible, how many reflective relations are possible. So like that, you have various questions coming up. So for that, it's better we focus a lot on equivalence relation. So before we get into equivalence relation, I would like to throw some light upon what is a relation? Guys, what is a relation? Whenever you have a relation, you always talk about a cross product A cross B. You always talk about cross product A cross B. Okay. So a relation is always going to be a subset of this cross product. Okay. And usually the questions which are asked are going to be A cross A only. It will be A cross A. Now let me talk about this for a while. So when I have a relation which is a subset of A cross A, I want to find out whether it is going to be an equivalence relation or is it going to be it okay whether it is going to be an equivalence relation. Let us see how it is going to be an equivalence relation. So when it is going to be an equivalence relation, it is going to be reflexive, symmetric and transitive all together. All together is called as an equivalence relation. So let us break it down and see one by one quickly. Okay, a quick recap so that all of you benefit from this. Now, when do I say it is reflexive? So when my A contains, when my A contains an element small a, when I, when my A contains an element small a, then my relation should contain, relation should contain A comma A as simple as that. So for every element, for every element small a in my capital A, there should be a comma a in my relation. If it is there, it is reflexive. If not, nope. If not, no. It is not going to be a reflexive relation. Okay guys, so as simple as that. But note that for every a, for every small a belonging to capital A, for every small a belonging to capital A, a comma a should be present in my relation. Only then it is going to be reflexive. Now let us see what is symmetric. Symmetric means if a comma b belongs to my R, then b comma a should also belong to my relation. That's it. So if I have a comma b belonging to my relation, then for sure a b comma a should also be there. For sure b comma a should also be there. Only then it is called as symmetric. That is a b then the reverse should be there. As simple as that. If something is there, the reverse also should be there. Only then it is symmetric. Guys, one common mistake which people do is, one common mistake which I find students doing is, they will look for all possible pairs. That is not needed. What is there, you look at it, that's it. Don't try to bring in extra things, okay? So for what is there, you check this condition. If something is there, then its reverse has to be there. If something is present in the relation, then its reverse must be there. But don't bring it from the, subs from the cross product and check it yourself. Don't do that. That is not right, okay? What is present, that alone you check. That alone you check. Is that fine, guys? But for reflexive, it is not so. But for reflexive, it is not so. Why? For reflexive, you need to check for every element. You need to check for every element. If an element is there in A, then A comma A must be there in my relation. If it is not there, I have to make it. I have to make it, so I will bring it and put it. Okay? But that is for reflexive alone. When you come to symmetric, forget about that. Forget about that. Check only for those elements which are present in your relation. Those elements which are present in your relation, check if they have reverse. If they have reverse, it is symmetric. If they don't have, it is not. That's it. Okay. And similarly, you have transitive also. Transitive is similar to symmetric in a way. Okay. So in transitive, what do you have? If A comma B and B comma C belong to R, then A comma C should also belong. Then A comma C should also belong to my relation. If A comma B and B comma C, there are two ordered pairs which belong to my relation, then this should imply that A comma C is also related. A comma C is also related. That is what I call as a transitive relation. Okay. Perfect. Now let's go to a question. Let's go to an interesting question on this topic. 
can you guys try it out so those who are interested please pause your video right now and practice this and try to solve it okay so i will discuss the answer in a while so what is given here they have given a relation 1 comma 2 2 comma 3 and 3 comma 4 now they are saying that this is a relation on the set of natural numbers then the least number of then the least number of elements that must that must be included in r okay that must be included in r to get a new relation yes where s is an equivalence relation where s is an equivalence relation okay guys so now here there is something very interesting happening so they are asking what is the least number of elements so let us say this relation is defined on the set capital a okay let us say i am sorry let us say this relation is defined on the set capital a okay now capital a is going to be a set of natural numbers okay it is going to be a set of natural numbers obviously not the entire one because it does not make sense none of the options have infinite okay ideally that should be the case but here they are saying a is a set of natural numbers it has some natural numbers in it and r is a relation on a that means r is a subset of a cross a r is a subset of a cross a that means the elements of r are coming from a that means the elements of r are coming from a so how many different elements are there how many different elements are there one two three four that's it one two three and four that's it guys so these are going to be my elements of the set a these are going to be the elements of the set a how sir because whatever elements you have here it should come from a guys it should come from a because r is coming from subset of a cross a r is a subset of a cross a a cross a has ordered pairs of a only right it has ordered pairs of a only so if any number comes here it has to come from a that is what i wrote here and since you are looking at least number i stop here since you are looking at least number i stop here i don't want to go beyond okay it is not possible to go beyond it will be an inference that also is possible okay so now now coming back to it so a is equal to 1 2 3 4 now i want to make sure that this relation becomes an equivalence relation that this relation becomes an equivalence so what should i do obviously it is not reflexive because one is one two three four are there and none of the pairs are there is one comma one there in my relation no is two comma two there no three comma three no four comma four nope so all these four should be present over there only then i can call it a equivalence relation because reflexive must be satisfied reflexive must be satisfied so let me do that first so i have to add i have to add 1 comma 1 2 comma 2 3 comma 3 and 4 comma 4 so that is my first condition that is my first condition okay what is the first condition the first condition is to make it reflexive we will go stepwise guys that is always the best way that is always the best way i will go stepwise so first i made it i made it reflexive now i will make it symmetric how do i make it symmetric i will look at the i will look at the relation given what is the relation given 1 comma 2 is there but is 2 comma 1 there is 2 comma 1 there no so i have to add 2 comma 1 and 2 comma 3 is there is 3 comma 2 there is 3 comma 2 there no so i have to add 3 comma 2 3 comma 4 is there 4 comma 3 is it there 4 comma 3 because the reverse should be there right do you all remember i told you the reverse should be there and where am i checking i am checking only in r i am checking only in r so i have to add 4 comma 3 also i have to add 4 comma 3 also is that clear to everyone guys so now my relation is going to be reflexive for sure okay now it is symmetric also because i made the sufficient changes now let us see how to make it transitive let us see how to make it transitive so look at it carefully guys one two is there two three is there 
1, 2 is there, 2, 3 is there. So what should be there? So what should be present inside? 1, 3 should be present inside. 1, 3 also should be present because it has to be transitive. It has to be transitive. So I will add 1, 3 as well. 1, 3 as well. Now, 2, 3 is there. 3, 4 is there. 2, 3 is there. 3, 4 is there. So what should be present? So what should be present? Obviously, 2, 4 should be present. 2, 4 should be present. Okay? Is that clear to everyone? Guys? So how many elements have we added? And is this the end? Is this the end of it? Is this the end of it? Notice one thing carefully. These two elements you have added, right? These two elements you have added to the set. So you have added to the relation. Okay. These two elements you have added to the relation. Now, whatever is present in the relation should have the reverse. Only then it is symmetric. Only then it is symmetric. What did I check before? I checked only for these three terms. But what about those I added now? What about those I added now? I didn't check, right? So, I should also add 3 comma 1 and 4 comma 2. Why sir? Because 3 com 1 comma 3 is there. But is 3 comma 1 there? No. I added this because of transitive condition. But that transitive condition gave me a damage in symmetric. Okay. It gave me a damage in symmetric. It destroyed my symmetricity. So, I have to make it symmetric again. I have to make it symmetric again. So, what do I do? I add 3 comma 1 and 2 comma 4 is there. So, to make it symmetric, what do I do? I add 4 comma 2. That's it. Perfect. So, how many elements I have added totally? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 and 11. So, I have added 11 elements more to my relation given here to make it an equivalence relation. To make it an equivalence relation. Guys, brilliant question. It's a very good question. You can expect this sort of question in the exam. Okay? Because it is totally doable in less than one minute. If you do it very fast, you can solve it in less than 45 seconds. Okay? So that should be the speed. Please work on it and practice a lot of questions, guys. Practice a lot of questions because these are easy topics. These are easy topics. What I call uh, low investment but high returns. You invest the less time but you get a lot of mark from this. Okay? So try to capitalize on that. So now, I hope all of you are clear. The answer is going to be? The answer is going to be 11. Is that, is that fine? Okay. So now, we will move on to the next concept, guys. We will move on to the next concept which is basics of mathematical reasoning so this is something many of you might be interested in i'm very sure about it because every year you have a single question you have a single question coming up every year on mathematical reasoning and guys tend to neglect it because it is not required for advance and it is a bit dry to study i agree totally okay it is a bit dry to study but guys it it gives you marks Okay, and that too for sure. So please try to spend some time. And I'm telling you, if you spend 40 minutes on this chapter, you can get four marks. 40 minutes. In 40 minutes, you can master this topic and I will help you do that. Okay, I have condensed the entire topic into a 15 minute lecture. So I'm going to give a little bit of theory also. So if you are expecting questions, wait for it guys. We will go to it because understanding is also quite important. So let us do that first. Okay, so first, I will want to understand what is a statement, sir. Mathematical reasoning is a bit different. So you need to understand some theory. Only then you will be able to do problems. Okay. Before diving into problems, we will learn some theory based on it. So first, what is a statement? So guys, a statement is nothing but anything that can be true or false. That is called as a statement. So for example, 2 is an even number. Is that a statement? 2 is an even number. Is that a statement? Yes, absolutely, because I know that 2 is an even number. That's a true statement. Therefore, it is a statement. Now, I will give you another example. I'm asking you, go wash the plate. Go wash the plate. If I say that, that is not a statement because that is an order. That is an order. Or when you leave, I'll ask you to close the door. So that is also a request. So whenever you have order or request, that does not constitute as a statement. Okay, that is something which you have to understand. Not everything is going to be a statement. 
only only things which have exact truth or exact false is going to be statement now after you know that let us come to conjunction conjunction is nothing but a fancy word for and a fancy word for and okay because whenever you have statements right when we when we grow up as a baby we start to speak some sentences and then what do we do we combine sentences right we combine sentences like that once you know what is a statement you want to combine statements now you have two statements two is a even number three is a prime number i want to combine both i don't want to speak in bits right i don't want to speak in bits so how do i combine both two is a even number and three is a prime number like that so that is called as conjunction and now what is disjunction disjunction is nothing but as some of you might have already guessed it is nothing but or it is nothing but or okay is that fine so that is called as conjunction and disjunction which are nothing but and and or so and is given the symbol like this and is given the symbol like a arrow so how i remember it in a easy way see a is that right and it is similar to a that's it it is similar to a so what is the other one going to be this is or so or is going to be given like this and and is going to be given like that because guys without this you will not be able to even understand the question okay without this you will not even be able to understand the question so please pay some attention and try to complete it today right after the lecture go back and try to solve some questions on it because guaranteed you get four marks why lose it why lose it when you have it in your hand okay so this is and and this is or now coming to conditional statement what are conditional statement conditional statement are nothing but implies so if i say p implies q what does that mean that means if p occurs then q also occurs if p happens q follows like that so if p then q that is called as conditional statement if p then q okay now the next one is contrapositive what is contrapositive so contrapositive is on a statement it happens on a statement so let us say i have p implies q now i want to find the contrapositive of this how do i do it it is nothing but minus q implies minus p that is the contrapositive statement of this one okay that is the going to be the contrapositive of this statement p implies q as simple as that guys this is all that is required to be learned this is all that is required to be learned and what i cover here if you master it you are ensure of four marks okay and the last one is going to be biconditional statement what is biconditional it is implied implies and implied by okay it is going to be like this so p implies q and q implies p p implies q and q implies p so these are the basics guys these are the basics that are required for mathematical reasoning and i have a very big surprise for all of you so i'm going to say something which might even shock some of you so guys i'm going to give you four formulas four just four formulas if you know that you can get the four marks in je mains that's it i will just give you four formulas if you know those four you are guaranteed of four marks to a, to a very good extent okay so let us see what those four formulas are okay everyone done with this so and and or please keep it in mind conditional statements what is contrapositive and then what is biconditional statement these are basics you have to know at least what the symbol means you have to know what those symbols mean okay so now we will come to the formula which will make our job much much easier okay so let me go to that so this is a very important slide please take it down all of you must have it in your notes if you are preparing for je mains please have this in your notes and revise it the day before exam the day before exam you have to revise it and go so what is the first one so p implies q is fine all of you know that that is nothing but conditional statement that is nothing but conditional statement but guys the question they ask in exam is not going to be like that they ask you mostly with and or or so you have to interpret what p implies q means in terms of and or or okay and i think we skipped a bit which is negation so this symbol this symbol tilde okay i think i'll have to use the marker 
okay so this symbol is called as negation what do you mean by negation so i am going out today that is a statement what is the negation of that i will not be going out today that's it so negation is nothing but negating it i'm giving a negative tone to it that's it so that is what i call as negation and it is given the symbol tilde tilde symbol okay which i have written over there now p implies q is something which we learned in the previous slide what is that conditional conditional statement okay so now i want to understand its meaning in terms of and i want to link p and q with using conjunction and disjunction so this is the relation this is the relation sir how do we prove it what do we do to understand it even better so guys there's something called as truth table so usually these logical statements are all proved using truth table but i would say it is not required it, at this time not required you can directly remember this i know it's wrong to say that but at this while it is directly better to remember this guys you will see that i i will be able to solve any question on mathematical reasoning if i remember these formulas over here so that first one i will interpret it for you so this is negative of p and what is this symbol and or or and or or okay it is going to be or okay v is or and the other one up arrow symbol is nothing but and okay so it is going to be or so it is negative p or q that is the interpretation of conditional statement now i want to negate the conditional statement itself i want to negate the conditional statement itself now what happens it'll be it'll be negative of it'll be negating the statement over here because this is going to be this one right so instead of this in the bracket i wrote this expression okay everyone so what is negative of negative negative of negative is going to be the same thing okay and negative of or will make it and negative of or will make it and and negative of q is going to be negative q as simple as that isn't that super amazing so guys that is how you operate on these logical statements that is how you operate on these statements is that fine so i hope all of you have understood it so this is again an expression to remember this is again an expression to remember you have to remember these statements okay so now coming to the next part what is given here here you have the biconditional statement so what does that mean that means p implies q and q implies p is that correct so is that what i wrote here p implies q and q implies p is that fine so now i want to negate this after i learn it immediately i want to negate it because i want to obtain some relations which i can use in my exam so when i negate it what happens negating of a biconditional statement let us look at it so it is going to be negating this and this negative of and will become or negative of and will become or and then negating this and negating p implies q we already have what is negating p implies q negating p implies q is going to be here so didn't i write that didn't i write that isn't it super awesome so we already learned it and we are using it to derive some more relations okay i use that over here similarly negative q implies p can also be got from this only thing p and q should reverse that's it p and q should reverse over i got the statement here and contrapositive i already told you guys in the previous slide what is contrapositive so when i have p implies q when i have a statement p implies q the contrapositive of that is going to be negative q implies negative p okay negation of q implies negation of p is that clear to everyone guys these are quite important this slide is the most important of the last one hour i would say of the last one hour this is going to fetch you the maximum marks okay so please go through it and work some questions out i would say ncert exemplar or ncert miscellaneous are all a good resource material for starting off for starting off and what is the best resource sir where can i practice questions so that i can get full marks the best resource is going to be the last 5 years papers okay because that is the most authentic source anyone can predict but actually what came in the exam this is the best resource right you have a original authentic source so go to that 
once you're thorough with the concept go back try to solve those questions if you feel comfortable super awesome you are guaranteed of scoring very high okay so we will move on guys we will move to question okay so now the first first question is going to be here if p and q are two proposition okay that's not proportion it's proposition it's a statement if p and q are two statements then what is negation of what is negation of p implies q and q implies p that is nothing but biconditional statement we already derived this right we already derived this you get this condition as the result which is what i asked in the question the question was odd the question was about negating this statement right the question was about negating this statement we already derived the expression we already derived the expression so first i write this so that my understanding is clear and then i negate it and when i negate it i have negative here this and will become or and i have negative here and for negative p implies q i already derived an expression i already derived an expression i will use it here and similarly q implies p negative of that will be the same way but q and p will be interchanged is that okay guys everyone so that is how you do it okay so we will go to the next question that i have got for you now this is pretty good you can try to solve this you can try to solve this okay what is negation of the statement p implies q and r what is negation of the statement p implies q and r so first let me first do what is p implies q so guys what is p implies q p implies q is nothing but not p negative p or q so now instead of q what do i have q and r i have q and r so instead of q i have q and r is that correct do we have an option like that do we have an option like that okay okay they are asking negative of it i'm sorry so this is p p implies q now they are asking negative of this so when i negate this when i negate this what will happen p will become p will become it was already negative so it will become p and then and will become i'm sorry or will become or will become as and and then this is going to be negated what is q and r negation q and r negation will be very simple it is going to be minus q and was there so it becomes or and minus r so do you have a statement like that do you have a statement like that yes absolutely yes absolutely so did you all understand what i did here so guys i started off i always start off with writing what is given i don't directly negate it i'm not that kind of an expert in mathematical reasoning so never do that you might have a very high probability of going wrong so p implies q and r i write that first i write what it means first here what is q here q is q and r so i wrote what that means first so what does that mean that means minus q or q and r that is the meaning of this conditional statement that is the meaning of this conditional statement solely now what do i do now i want to negate it i want to negate it so i will put a negative symbol outside so when i negate it what happens negating of negating p will be p only p only now negating of or will go to and negative of or will go to and now negating this statement here q will become negative q here what is that and is there that becomes or and r will become negative r as simple as that is that fine i hope all of you are able to follow so that is the way to proceed solving these questions of mathematical reasoning okay guys so with that we will come to the end of this session you guys can practice a lot of questions and if you have any doubt please post it in the comments we will try to help you out as much as possible is that okay i hope you guys like this session and please let your friends know in case 
they do not have access to good coaching or they can't afford coaching because this is our aim through this 15 day sprint we want to reach out to maximum number of students as possible and i hope you guys will help us out so guys with that we will move to the questions you guys can take a screenshot of it you can take a screenshot of the questions i have few more for you we are not going to do this we are going to probably discuss it in the comments okay so please take a screenshot of it and now coming to the end i want to speak a bit more on important areas to focus on so here the first important thing which i would tell all of you to focus on is going to be use of venn diagrams use of venn diagrams is pretty important guys when it comes to set questions venn diagrams reduce the complexity to a very minimal so venn diagrams is always helpful try to master it when you are practicing questions and de morris theorem again is useful in sets because it helps to reduce the complexity now coming to relation equivalence relation is the only thing which is frequently asked and under equivalence relation they usually tend to ask number of elements to be added they usually tend to ask number of reflexive relations or number of symmetric relations and so on so practice those kind of questions so guys this session here the entire one hour is just a preview of what is important and throwing some light upon it but ultimately the all the credit goes to you all the credit goes to you you have to put in your own hard work and build on this we have to build much more on this okay guys so equivalence relation very important number of symmetric relations number of transitive relations number of elements to be added to make it equivalence practice those kind of questions because they can be tricky at times they can be tricky at times and then mean median and mode last year there was a question solely asked on this 2018 you had a question based on mean median and mode okay you had a question based on mean median and mode directly so what is mean mean is average think of it that way what is median median is the middle most quantity when i arrange everything in order when i arrange everything in order median is my middle most quantity and what is mode mode is the most frequently repeated data mode is the most frequently repeated data so that is how i interpret mean mean and mode now apart from that they focus on variance also variance and standard deviation give you a very good clarity about the spread of data the spread of data how spread out my data is that is given by variance and standard deviation okay guys so please focus on these topics on set relation and statistics now i will focus on mathematical reasoning separately why because mathematical reasoning is a very important topic and for sure you have a question from that okay for sure you have a question from that now the first thing is you have to know the basics you know you need to know what is and and what is or because if you go wrong in that there is no way you can solve it right there is no way you can solve it right unless by probability or by luck you end up taking the right answer okay but otherwise be very clear about conjunction and disjunction guys and negation negation is simple i'm sure you might no one will go wrong there but conjunction is and disjunction is usually where people tend to you know misunderstand and then what is conditional statement and not just conditional statement everyone knows what is conditional statement because we all study computer science right most of you guys must be studying computer science and we study something called as conditional statement in in computer science so i am sure most of you might be knowing it already but you have to know the interpretation of it you have to know the interpretation of it in terms of and or statements okay so what is p implies q p implies q is going to be given as minus p or q that is what i am talking about p implies q everyone will tell that is very easy but what is p implies q in terms of negation and an or that is what they test because they try to either go this way around or that way around so both you have to be comfortable okay and the negation of a conditional statement i gave you those four formulas guys those four formulas are everything those four formulas are going to be everything in mathematical reasoning so master those four and come out with flying colors all the very best guys all of you should do very well and i hope this lecture helped you to understand something about mathematical reasoning so that you can go and build on it okay that is my aim my aim is not to make sure through this lecture you guys can go score full marks but you have to get that interest to go and study now you i hope all of you feel okay mathematical reasoning is not that dry i can do it in a day that is the ultimate aim 
so please go back and master this subject and get those four marks which are meant for you okay so guys with that we will end our session and thank you so much for listening and in case you liked it please do give a like and subscribe i think i did it the wrong way so do give us a like and and do subscribe to our channel as well and if you know someone who can benefit from this who doesn't have a proper coaching but is extremely talented and who can do well do share it with them so that they can also benefit from it because our ultimate aim is to reach out to a lot of people in remote areas who don't act, have access to coaching okay guys i hope you guys can do that and all the very best again do well in jee mains 2019 and keep in touch you can comment down whatever doubts you have we will sort it out for you thank you take care and bye bye